Practice Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and today we're talking about the Day 4 episode of Alien Invasion. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the lessons and discussion points brought up in that uh, video. And at the end, I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next week. And just to give you a heads up, there's some new ships, something totally new. So make sure you hang out, uh, you know, hang around and check that out at the very end of this video. Uh, but before any of that, if you haven't seen the Day 4 episode, I'm going to put a link somewhere up top or something like that. You can click on it and have some sense of what we're talking about while we're talking about it. Wait a moment if anyone needs to do that. Okay, now we're back. But before we talk about any of the discussion points, I want to thank a few uh, more people who have contributed in the past week to this, uh, the channel, and specifically the Alien Invasion series, through Patreon. Now, if you're not aware, the only reason I'm able to do this series at all is because of the generous uh, contributions of, of these people and so many others who have contributed to, um, to allow me to spend the time that it takes to, to create this series. Uh, and the people I wanted to thank uh, uh, this week are Robert Poole, uh, Nordic Resilience, Mrs. Vital Survival, and Charles. Thank you guys so much. This was the week that we made our first goal of being able to do one new, or to guarantee one new Alien Invasion episode per month going forward. I think an ideal level would be two per month, you know, the first and the third Friday of each month, you know, so you don't have to wait a whole month between episodes. But I just think it's tremendous that we've made this goal. If you're enjoying the series and you would like to see it uh, continue and, and you would possibly like to see more of it, you know, getting up to that maybe twice a month level, uh, here's a link down below. You can jump on Patreon for just a dollar a month or, you know, or more if, if uh, you think that's justified. Uh, you can help keep the series going. You can make it so that we can get to that second goal of having two a month. You know, again, if you're enjoying it, if you think it's worth your worth your while. Uh, because it's the Christmas season, as is alluded to in the background here, uh, I am I've got kind of a, a weird um, promotion I'm throwing out there for the first three people who contribute after this video. Uh, I'm going to let you tell me what to say in one of the episodes. Uh, like, a word or maybe word phrase, like word coupling. Uh, like, if you want to hear me say, I don't know, diaper in an episode, just tell me that's the word I gotta put in and I'll work it into the episode in some sort of a way that hopefully, you know, you'll be proud of and you'll be like, wow, that was really, that was really smooth the way they worked it in. If you wanna do like a word coupling, like flying pigs, which is technically two words, That'd be okay, but you know, it's, we're not talking about like a whole phrase or a sentence or anything. So just like diaper, flying pigs, kumquat, something like that. Get, throw me a curveball and see what I do with it. And uh, again, the first three people that uh, contribute at any level on Patreon after this video airs, uh, it's your obligation. I'll, I'll send you a thank you email and I'll let you know you're one of the three and, and you can let me know. Let me know my marching orders. The only the only thing I'm excluding is nothing uh, nothing like offensive, no cuss words or anything overtly sexual. I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't mind working the word penis in, but you know, let's just be more creative than that. So nothing sexual, no, no cuss words or anything like that. You know, you be creative, come up with something really weird, and and I'll do my best to get uh, you know to get it in there in a way that you'd be proud of. So that's it. First three people. If you're interested, links down below. So let's talk about the episode four, the day four episode. Um, in the day four episode, we're talking a lot about getting information, about feeling like you're in an information black hole, and how you rectify that. Now I've said over and over again, this is an alien invasion series, but it's not about alien invasion. It's about general preparedness and the skills that go along with that. The kind of things that are helpful if there is a earthquake or fire or flood or, you know, a general loss of electricity, anything like that. Getting information is really, really important in that situation so you can make good decisions. In this, uh, in this episode, I'm using a shortwave radio to try to get radio signals. And radio is a really great way of, uh, of gathering information. If you, you can have a battery powered radio, in your in your preps, I think it's a really valuable way of being able to have some sense of what's going on in the world around you. Uh, there are other ways. I mean, you can use ham radios uh, or um, smoke signals <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but it's very it's really critical to have some mode of getting information when you're in an otherwise sort of information blackout because otherwise. You can be doing, making decisions that you think are good decisions, but they may actually be putting you in a worse uh, situation. So what is your approach to that? Are you a ham radio op operator? I know, obviously, in an uh, extensive grid down situation, ham radios are going to be a little hamstrung, 
uh, from the uh, the repeaters that they use uh, for uh, or for sending signals over uh, you know long distances. The repeaters need electricity, uh, but you know some of those might be on backup power. Is ham radio uh, a technique that you're going to be implementing implementing in a lot of um, very serious situations that have happened in the past, earthquakes? Hurricanes, uh, ham radio operators have really come in and saved the day for a lot of people. So that's a, a very useful, uh, a very useful skill set, a very useful piece of technology that has helped people in the past. So, what is your uh, data or information collection strategy? If you have an interesting idea, please please share it down in the uh, comments below. Obviously, if you're going to be using anything electronic, you're going to need energy for that. And we also talk about solar power in the episode. Now, I do a lot with solar power here at my house. In fact, renewable energy, sustainability, that was really kind of my gateway drug into prepping in the first place, trying to be more self-reliant, self-sufficient, lower footprint, all that kind of stuff. So I have a lot of solar energy here. I haven't really done anything with wind just because I've been so happy with solar. It's like, you know, why rock the boat? <laughs> Solar's working so great. Uh, it, it also doesn't have any moving parts or anything like that to break. So I'm, I'm a real fan of solar. Wind is also great. In fact, I just read an article this morning that in the UK, they're getting more energy, or just during this last year, the UK is getting more energy from wind than they are from coal. And that's awesome because you're not gonna run out of wind. Uh, and, you know, the US is adopting a different strategy based on dinosaur fuels, which is awesome. And goodbye to the 20 subscribers that I just lost by saying that, but it's my feeling is that renewable energy is renewable and non-renewable energy has this bad habit of not being renewable. And uh, it's good to be able to renew things because then you can get more of them. I know that's my liberal attitude kicking in. <laughs> But I, have you thought about doing solar? It's really, really simple to do if you can possibly, you know, stomach the idea of doing something that's renewable technology. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've had a lot of people leave this week because of my ultra left-wing video I did about helping to avoid some of the new Republican uh, tax bill increases. I had a lot of people that were talking about how liberal and left-wing I was because I was trying to help people avoid paying some taxes, which I haven't quite figured that one out in my head yet. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm anticipating everything I say that has the word solar panel in it, I'm losing one subscriber for every, every bit, but probably gaining two or three, so who cares. Um, so uh, yeah, solar is something that I've done a lot with and it's super, super simple. As I say in the video, you get solar panels, you've got batteries, and you've got some way of kind of uh, controlling the way that uh, the batteries get charged. Solar panels don't have to be that expensive. 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars is going to get you a good basic small solar panel that you can use to, you know, you're not going to be running your electric oven or your blender off of this, but you can recharge your cell phone, you can recharge flashlight batteries, all that kind of stuff. Just having some basic capability of regenerating electricity without having to have a coal power plant in your backyard is it's a real boon and I'm always using it whenever the power goes out here. I've got the solar backup that keeps the refrigerator going and all that kind of stuff. It's waiting to help you if you want to get into it. I've got some videos, I'll put some links to those here as well about how uh, my solar uh, system works. Uh, but it's a very simple approach. Uh, is that something that you've worked on? Are there other things that you've worked on? Have you done micro hydro? Uh, you know, are you into, into wind? If you have any experiences, please share them with, uh, below with other people because, you know, the more that we all share our, uh, our collective experience of what works and what doesn't, you know, the better off it is for all of us. I think, you know, we're always better off when our neighbors are less desperate than more desperate in a crisis. I, that's just common sense. So the more we can get more people into being prepared and, and to not be that desperate you know, uh, you know, mom or dad with hungry kids at home, you know, the better off it is for all of us. So please share your thoughts below. And without any further blabbing about any of that, here is a sneak peek from what's happening next week. Uh, like I said, new ships, very exciting. That's it. Thanks for watching. The way that I got into wild edibles was a few years ago, I just started learning a few at a time. And you might think that, you know, you run a risk of poisoning yourself that way, but really there are some very easy ones to identify. And once you become comfortable with those, you don't have to really worry about, uh, you know, toxic plants as long as you stick to what you know. And then I just added to my knowledge over time. Uh, yeah, what is that? Okay, okay, okay. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.